Hello, this is Ethan from Dark Zebra. Today's our second lesson on uh, MongoDB, and we're going to be covering very basic parts of querying against a, a collection and finding documents that match uh, what we're searching for. I have created a JSON file in my GitHub account, which is Dark Zebra. So github.com slash dark zebra and it's called sample data there's a folder called mongo and there's books.json in there that has right now 21 books in a JSON file and I can just copy and paste this and go over to my mongo database here make sure I'm using the right one and because this is a tutorial, I want to drop anything that's already there. One of the things that we uh, can do with an insert statement is pass in an array of objects to insert. And that's what this JSON file is for. So I can just copy and paste this string into the insert statement. Hit enter. And I've now inserted 21 records. Now we can start playing with our queries. Uh, and so I just wanted to have that available to you to play around with Mongo. We've played with, in the first lesson, db.books, which is our collection, and then the find method within that. By default, this returns all of our records. Actually, what it returns is a cursor to our records, and it will grab the first 20 records by default. So because I have 21 records, it's going to tell me type IT for more because it's only returned the first 20 records. I type IT and I have the last record. The format for the find method is that it can take it, uh, an object as the first parameter which represents the items that we want to query with. If you don't pass anything in or you pass in an empty object like this it will return all records. But if I want to search based upon title I can type in war and peace, hit enter, and it will find me the one record that matches this in, in, our, in my data set. But see, I can also do the same thing with our object ID. I can do a find with underscore ID equal to the object ID. And the object ID is a method that transforms this into uh, the object that MongoDB needs and I'll still find that same record. There's also a find one method which will just return the first record that matches rather than an array or a uh, cursor for it. Now one thing to remember with this especially on the title is that war and peace here is case sensitive. So if I type in warm piece with a lowercase p, it doesn't find any records. The way we get around this and deal with case insensitivity is with regular expressions. I can pass in a string to title, but I can also pass in a regular expression denoted by the uh, slashes. And I can say war and peace. Add a, a, an i at the end of this and it makes it case insensitive. And now I will find my record. And if you notice, I didn't even type out piece. It just looked for this string, war and piece, somewhere in the title. And if it matched, it returned a record. If you know anything about regular expressions, the caret basically says, the caret says you have to match everything at the beginning, or, or that this has to be the beginning of the sentence or of, of our pattern. And the dollar sign says this has to be the beginning, so or the ending. So what this will do is match anything that has a title of war and peace exactly, minus the fact that it's case insensitive. And so that's right here is basically the same thing as a string war and peace. And you'll notice I don't find anything now because I took off the case insensitivity. I can also use these regular expressions to do some kind of a wild card search. So I can say war dot star which says match any combination of characters in any order slash piece and we're going to do insen case insensitive 
And so this will just look for war, followed by any number of characters, and then a piece somewhere in our title. And you'll see that it matches again. And if I just want to do a simple look for a word, I could do war, case insensitive. And now I get war and peace and the art of war. And this would also, I don't have an example of this, but if I had something that it were part of a, uh, a name of a title, like Warlock or something was in the title, that would also match. It just looks for W-A-R somewhere in the title. I'm not going to cover too much on regular expressions because they're very big and a very deep well, but let's just say that Mongo has full support for Perl compatible regular expressions or PCRE. So there's a I'll link to the Wikipedia page and you can uh, look exactly what it can do in terms of PCRE. Now what happens if I want to do something that isn't a string? Like say I want to find all books with a year that is greater than the that has been published since the year 2000. And what we need to do here is, and by the way, this is called a query document. The object passed in to find is called a query document. And we can do sub documents here. There are a bunch of operators and I'll only cover some of them today, but I have dollar sign GT which stands for greater than, dollar sign greater than equal, GTE, less than, less than equal, and not equal. And so what I have to do here is I pass in this object here and I say it has to have a field name or property of dollar sign GT. And in here I pass in my value. We want this to be GTE because we're doing greater than or equal and we say 2000, enter. This will find all books greater with a year greater than 2000. Only have one here which is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. Excellent book if you have not read it. And so I could do the same thing here and do a less than or equal to and say the year 1600 and I get Machiavelli's The Prince. That's the very basic parts of how we do like less than equals, not equals. You know, by default, if I just do year equal colon something, it's an equals. Otherwise, I have to pass in this object. Okay, what about uh, ands and ors? So by default, so first of all, because this is an object, you can only have one of these at a time. In other words, the last item I use here is going to be the value that actually gets used. So if I say greater than greater than or equal to the year 2000 again, it's only going to pull out this record which is Brandon Sanderson again because this is an object and it's not an array and so it pulls out this last value we set for the year. It's important to remember that if you need to do an AND, you can do ANDs with multiple fields in here. So we could say less than 1600 and we say title equals something about print insensitive. Enter. And there we found Machiavelli again. So that is how we do a basic AND. But that's not too—that's uh, not necessarily too helpful. What if I wanted to find books between greater than the year 1600 and less than the year 1800? This, so I have basically they're both the same year, and I can't add in year again. What do I do then? Well, there are some more operators in here. So once again, my query document, and this time I have to do a dollar sign or. And we have dollar sign or, dollar sign and, dollar sign nor, dollar sign not, dollar sign. I think that's it actually uh, for these logical operators right now. So we're going to do or, and then this takes a sub document as well, or a sub object. And this is where we say something like, Oh, I, actually, I'm wrong. This does not take a sub document. 
it takes an array of subdocuments for the OR. I want to write this in this code editor so we can see better how these objects are created. So we do db.books.find and we're going to have an object which has an OR with it. And that's going to have an array of parameters that will be this or this or this. Each of these parameters has to be another query document, like so. And so in our case, we want to look for all books that are, let's say, any book, we say year. And once again, because it's a, we're going to do a greater than, we have to pass in dollar sign GT greater than or equal to 1600. And down here, actually, I'm going to change this to say any book less than or equal to 1600. Or it's going to be any book greater than or equal to the year 2000. I have my first query document, which has an OR, and then inside of here I pass in my two fields along with their criteria. We're going to go back and paste this into here. Actually, we won't paste it into there. We're going to paste it directly and hit enter, and now we found two books, Machiavelli and Brandon Sanderson. That's how we do ORs. If we change this to a NOR, it will match the opposite of this, which will be all of the other books in there. That's how you handle the basics of finding all records, using regular expressions, and using the OR, NOR, greater than, less than, the query objects. Um, so that's the very basics. The only other thing I want to add in tonight is the second parameter for the find command is the, so we're going to pass in an empty object for the, the query parameters, the criterion, but the second one here defines what fields we want to return. So for instance, if all we want to return is title, we'd say title equals one. And by default, it always includes underscore ID. So I hit enter and I get underscore ID and title. That's it. That's the same as saying select ID title from books in a SQL database. If we want to not, for whatever reason, include the ID, then we would do something like uh, underscore ID equals zero, title equals one, hit enter, and now we just have the titles. If I want to return everything but like a few specific fields, let's say we don't really care about the year, then I can just pass in that to year equal to zero, and it will return in everything else. And everything that occurs here can happen in the count as well, except for the field listing. So we have a db.books.count, and in here I can pass in a criteria and say title equals war sensitive, and I should get two records for that. So the same query documents that can be passed into find can be passed into db.books uh, to the count method. And I'm going to add a link to the Mongo documentation. I might cover it later, but all the different operators that can get passed in. Just remember that for the most part, it's field equals value, unless you have to do ors or ands, and then you're going to do something like dollar sign or, and then you're going to do uh, a parameter of an array of, of your parameters. Thanks for watching this Dark Zebra presentation. Please rate this video and add it to your favorites if you liked it. For additional content, 
You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at darkzebra.com.